was it? Terrible? Can you make sure he knows where he's at? Can you reach the fire better? I can. Mm -hmm. I can, yeah, just reach the mic. Jeez. Okay. And then we won't need that third one. And then we don't know your song that starts at letter T on page four. I love this song. Me too. I don't care. It's hard. It's so hard for 20 she years. I say that way. Or whatever. Yeah. Why? Just make sure he knows all the changes we're making because she and I just slapped oh. too. Transfiguration Catholic Church on this beautiful 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time with the Georgia Bulldogs winning yesterday. All is in order. Please, if you would, silence your cell phone. Stand with us as we rejoice in the Lord with love the Lord.
Good evening. So, um, are you okay there? Am I okay? So I took a couple days off, and I came back, and I found that you people left two baskets on top of my desk with a bunch of goodies to keep growing. Some gave me cards. Some gave me gift cards. Thank you. Your generosity is amazing. I read all the letters. Many people gave me fraternal correction. Others told me, keep your homily short, and I will try to keep doing that. Someone gave me a bottle of sunblock. It, it didn't say why. I figured is I can go to Puerto Rico for a whole month and use that. But thank you. Thank you for your generosity, even though we know each other only for four months. Thank you for the way you treat your priests. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your My dear brothers and sisters, let us pause to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, teacher of justice, Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward them by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. Word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. May the words of the gospel enlighten my mind, guide my speech, and find a home in my heart. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Brittany Maynard ought to have had the rest of her life ahead of her. She and her husband are newlyweds, and they were looking forward to the things that life offers most of us, a family, a life together, changing diapers at three in the morning, getting kids to soccer, buying a house, Instead, she had brain cancer. She was 29 and had two, six months to live. And on November 1st, 2014, she ended her life by taking drugs doctors gave her. We're observing Respect Life Sunday today. The gospel invites us to love God and to love our neighbors. It invites us to be all in, to live like it matters. I can't know what it's like to travel a path like Brittany's. Cancer wasn't her will, and it wasn't God's. But I can't answer her. I watched my father battle and survive lung cancer. I'm a husband whose wife started to bleed during the six month of pregnancy. One of my daughters has been taken to the ER twice. I watched a woman commit suicide. 
I know what it's like to have failed and not to be able to undo the failure. I know what it's like for someone to fail me and not to be able to go back to the way things were. It will fall to someone else to make some of the dreams and hopes that I had when I was a young man real. I faced my own mortality and had to accept the responsibility for making sure that the time I have left, whether it's one minute or 50 years, is honest to God and honest to me. In hard times and in good ones, I can answer. I know what it's like to choose life, and so do you. It's not always easy. Brittany's life mattered. Her story matters. Her suffering matters. And in choosing the way of her t and time of her death, she, she short-circuited what we have known since we've been human. Death is no less a monster if it comes because of things that happen to us or things that we do. If you know you're dying, if you anticipate it, you can choose to let those who love you be with you. The last kiss, the last touch, the last breath matters. And knowing that there will be a time when there will not be another word or touch or kiss is hard, it's frightening, it's lonely, and this is one reason that being Christian makes a difference. My faith tells me that Christ understands my hard, frightening, lonely moments. So far, my goodbyes have been letting go of some dreams and some people I love. One day, I'll have to let go of all of it. We have all kinds of images in Jesus and the Gospels. He's the good shepherd. He's the woman who relentlessly searches for a lost coin. He's the owner of a vineyard who recklessly pays everyone the same wage. He's the rich man who feeds a banquet to the poor. And he is the one who opened his arms on the cross and when we trust Jesus to be the shepherd who carries us, the person who chases us down, the one who is generous to the point of folly, the rich man who drags us to the feast, and the one who is absolutely, unconditionally sure that not even death conquers love, then death is no longer dying. That kind of love lives forever. Brittany believed that the lie, that her suffering was pointless. She avoided some of the pain of dying, but those who survived her did not. They will always want one more touch, one more minute. Brittany cheated us all of some measure of our humanity the love, the relationships we experience, even during hard, time, hard times, or the way we experience God and His love, even when dying as part of the experience. We're observing Respect Life Sunday today. Brittany missed something vital. Respecting life isn't about avoiding pain and suffering. It's a radical commitment to living. And we do that in all kinds of ways. We put the needs of the poor and the vulnerable ahead of our own. We defend the common good by working for justice. We care for the environment. We strive for peace. It's personal. It's about giving a pair of socks to a homeless person. It's about sheltering a kid who's struggling with gender identity, whose parents have kicked him out of the house. It's about providing food and shelter and bill assistance. 
It's about supporting policies that make sure no child goes to bed hungry, and it means being a peacemaker, especially now. I hope that Brittany came to know that the love of Christ is real. The Gospels don't just tell a story. Easter is real. It intrudes on me and you in the most inconvenient ways. Jesus was inconvenient while He lived. A God that is generous to a fault is inconvenient. A God that doesn't support the establishment or political revolution or retreat from the world or moral compromise, but who is instead wholly concerned that I am, that each of us is, wholly concerned about His cause in the world, that God is honored, that His will is done, that people have their needs abundantly met, that wrongs are forgiven, and that evil will be conquered. This God is inconvenient. And it's this message that got Oscar Romero killed. It got Jesus killed. The only difference is that Jesus didn't have the decency to stay dead. And we're afraid to take it seriously. We dress Christmas up in pageants and Easter and butterflies and bunnies, and we don't ask ourselves, who is Jesus? And what does He have to do with living and dying? That's the question Brittany didn't ask, and it's a question that deserves an honest-to-God answer. None of us knows which breath is our last. But life isn't about our last breath so much as it is about living this breath, whether my heart is bursting with joy, or breaking into a thousand pieces, or waiting somewhere in between. Respect for life isn't about changing laws or appointing the right kinds of judges. Instead, it demands an all-in personal commitment. It demands that we ask ourselves, who is Jesus, and what does He have to do with living and dying? And when we do, we will put the needs of the poor and the vulnerable ahead of our own. We will defend the dignity of every human person. We will care for the environment, and we will defend the common good by working for justice and peace. There's no shortage of issues, mass shootings, homelessness, poverty, and war. We can pray, and we should, but we can do more. We can be peacemakers, and being a peacemaker means interrupting injustice without being unjust. It means breaking the back of evil without destroying people. It means finding a third way that pursues both reconciliation and justice. So if you need something to think about today, love God and love your neighbors. Be radical. Be all in. Live like it matters. That's what Jesus did. And that's what Jesus alive in the Eucharist invites us to. That kind of grace isn't cheap. Sometimes it takes everything we have just to believe it from one breath to the next. But if we do, we will encounter the one who is absolutely unconditionally sure that freedom, real freedom, gives life to the oppressed and the oppressor, and that oppression, no matter where we find it, will end and we will be free. 
When we lived in New Jersey, a group of men from our parish kept inviting me to join them in prison ministry at a supermax prison in Trenton. I resisted. They invited Sister Helen Prejean to come speak one night at the parish, and I went. And as she spoke, I recalled my, my grandmother's brother. When I was 14, he murdered his wife and was sentenced to life in prison. He died alone in prison. When Sister Helen had finished speaking, I bought a copy of her book, Dead Man Walking. I told her my story and that I was going to accept the invitation to prison ministry. She signed the book, gave it back to me, and as she did, she held my hand for a moment and she said, choose life. Amen. Thank you. Good job. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we place our needs and the needs of others before our Heavenly Father, who is the source of all love. For our Catholic Church, may the gospel of Jesus Christ guide our Pope bishops, priests, deacons, and lay people in all things. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our leaders of ministries, may the Lord continue to strengthen them and bless them in their journey of leading others to encountering Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our parish, help us to be the body of Christ we receive at this altar and help us share his presence with those we meet through our words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For public officials, may God grant them courage and wisdom in attending to and protecting the most vulnerable, especially the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, may our faith draw us to preserve, respect, and protect all human life 
from womb to tomb, and may the Holy Spirit fill the hearts of all impacted by the tragedies in, in Maine with hope and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live with chronic illness and all who are impaired by addiction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Ronald M. Sykes, Genevieve Ziobro, Richard Eckel, and Gloria Palkovic, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions you hold in the silence of your hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Believing in true God, you are our strength and our refuge. Hear the prayers of your people, which we make through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service 
may be directed above all to your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, cancel out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Señor mío, Dios mío. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Señor. The mystery of faith When we push bread and drink this song We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Until you come again Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our Bishop, the Auxiliary Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word on my soul shall. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Join us in singing Prayer of St. Francis.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs may one day possess in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated a second. Maybe more than a second. We have a bunch of announcements here. See the table outside for I give Catholic in the narthex. Rise Against Hunger is working to end hunger globally and needs our help. Come and join us Saturday, November 11th from 1.30 to 2.30, or from 3.45 to 4.45 here in the social hall. Help us to pack hundreds of meals that will be shipped worldwide. We can do something to help end world hunger. We have a holy day this week, All Saints Day on November 1st. Tuesday night, we have the vigil at 6.30 in Spanish. And Wednesday, November 1st, the Holy Day, we have Mass at 9. We have Mass at 5. It's called the Children's Mass. And Mass at 7 p.m. Hope to see you here celebrating the saints. There might be some saints sitting with us here too. I hope and I pray. Thursday is All Souls Day. There is Mass, it says here at 6.30 p.m. There's also Mass, I think, at 9 in the morning that day. That'll be a communion service, Father. Oh, okay. Thank you for the fraternal correction. Good. Whatever questions you have about annulments, if you're seeking or wondering if you need one, Come Sunday night at 7 p.m. 
in the adult OCI room. The Prayer for the Dead, there's a book outside in the narthex, and you can sign the name of your beloved one. The book will be here on the altar, under the altar, during the month of November. Okay, that was a good homily. You, 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 you forgot you preach. You preach a good homily. That's what they're clapping for. God bless you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good Sunday. Oh,